Hi everybody, I'm Drew, and today I'm going to be explaining to you uh, MPD thrusters, which are short for Magnetoplasma Dynamic Thrusters. And so basically, um, to understand what these things are, right, from a very basic perspective, um, we need to understand two rules about physics, about electricity and magnetism, right? Um, and they can both be visualized using our right hand. Um, so the first rule, and this is represented by right hand rule one, is called the biot solvart Law. Um, and this was uh, presented by two physicists, one named Biot, one named Salvart. Um, and pretty much it dictates that if we have a current heading in the direction of my thumb, right? So a current heading upwards from the way my hand's positioned right now, then a magnetic field will make a curl around my thumb, around the current, right? So you can see, right, if we have a current heading towards the screen, then there will be a magnetic field going in a circle around in this direction, right? And so as long as you use your right hand, this is true for any direction in which you orient it, right? So if I have the current going this way, the magnetic field is curling around in this direction. If I have a current going this way, it's curling in this direction. Current going this way, curling around in this direction, right? Um, and uh, interestingly as well, this also works uh, the opposite direction, right? So if I have a magnetic field that's going straight up, now my thumb is representing the magnetic field, um, then I'll have a current that is following my fingers, that's curling around the magnetic field in this, or in this direction, right? If I have a magnetic field going in this direction, I'll have a current that is curling around in a circle around the magnetic field, right? So that's interesting. I need you to hold on to that so we can uh, explain the MPD thrusters in a minute. Okay, and the other force that's important to understanding MPD thrusters um, is the Lorentz force, and we can use right-hand rule two to visualize the Lorentz force. Um, so pretty much right-hand rule two says, that if you have a magnetic field going in the direction of my fingers, right, so a magnetic field going this way, and we have a, uh, a current, right, so a particle that's entering the magnetic field going up this way in the direction of my thumb, right, then there will be a force in the direction of my palm, so a force going towards me. If I face the camera towards you, if I face my hand towards the camera, then um, I will have, if I have a magnetic field going in the direction of my fingers, so this way, and I have a uh, ion that's going through this way in the direction of the current this way, then when it enters that magnetic field, if the magnetic field's going in this direction, then that um, uh, uh, particle will be pushed this way towards the screen. And again, just right, like right hand rule one, as long as you use your right hand, works in any direction. So magnetic field this way, I have a particle going through this way, then it will be pushed that way. Okay, great. So I want you to hold on to those um, and I'm going to be explaining how they apply to uh, MPD thrusters. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is um, explain what an MPD thruster is in its form and function. Um, so pretty much an MPD thruster, a magnetoplasma dynamic thruster, is a electric propulsive device um, that utilizes both the magnetic force and the standard uh, attractive and repulsive uh, force of um, particles, right? So pretty much it uses both the magnetic force, so the fact that um, a positive ion will go towards a uh, negative magnetic field, as well as the electrostatic repulsive force, um, the fact that a negative ion will be repelled away from another negative ion. Um, and so pretty much here we have a little image of an MPD thruster. And how it works is a propellant is inserted into the thruster going this way, right? And inside of the thruster, we have a cathode and an anode. Um, and the cathode is uh, this long pole right here, and the anode are the walls of the thr thruster. So all the way around is the anode. Um, and so pretty much when the propellant is pumped into the thruster, um, it is uh, ionized and heated up really, really fast, and it turns into plasma, right? So this is the plasma dynamic part of the name magnetoplasma dynamic thruster. Um, and so at a basis, um, we have uh, some fields going on, right? So pretty much um, we have a first a uh, magnetic field that's going on, right? So because the current is going this way in the direction of the green arrow you can see, we can use right hand rule one to determine that there will be a magnetic field going around in a circle around the cathode. So you can see this black line right here is the magnetic field, and this is denoted by the letter B. So we have a current going in the direction of the green arrow, and therefore a magnetic field going around in a circle this way. So the magnetic field around, and it's going that direction. Um, and if we have a circle that's going around the cathode, right, then we have two things that are going on. 
right above the cathode, right, we have a little place where we know the magnetic field is going directly into the page, right? So it's going directly that way. Um, and then on this side of the cathode, we have a place where we know the magnetic field is going directly out of the page, right? Um, so pretty much with that information, we can then use the Lorentz force to determine that there will be a plasma exhaust going in that direction, right? So pretty much if we have a magnetic field going out of the page on this side of the paper, right? So we have a magnetic field going out of the page on this side of the paper. My fingers are going up this way, right? And then the red arrow right here, this red arrow, uh, indicates the um, direction of the um, ions, which are being accelerated into it, right? Um, then pretty much if we have that, then the ions will be pushed this way. The plasma will be pushed this way out of the thruster, right? Um, and so as a reminder, I just want to bring up right-hand rule of two again and show so the direction of the field. So this is the, that magnetic field right here. So the direction of your fingers is this blue magnetic field. This is coming out of the page, right? And the direction of the current is going upwards this way, upwards, right? Um, and uh, then we have, because of that, a force, a force going that way out of the thruster, right? Um, and if you watch my previous video, you know that because I'm doing third law, if we have mass coming out of the thruster that way, then the thruster and whatever the thruster is attached to will go that way, right? Which is great, which is what we want to happen. Cool, so I wanna look at the equation for the Lorentz force real quick. Um, and this is the equation for the Lorentz force. Um, and it's just uh, helpful in understanding the Lorentz force at a kind of more physics-based, mathematical-based um, standpoint, as opposed to a kind of just, uh, Okay, cool. I want to talk about the um, equation for the Lorentz force now. Um, and so this is kind of helpful in understanding the Lorentz force in a more kind of mathematical based standpoint. Um, so we have the force. So this is the force through the Lorentz force. So that's your palm. Remember, that's your palm. Um, and it is equal to the charge of a particle. So that's Q, right? Times the electric field plus the velocity of the vector times, so the velocity of the vector times the magnetic field. And since these are vectors, the times here is not a normal times, it's a cross product, actually. Um, and you can look up what a cross product on the internet is pretty easily. Um, and so uh, that's pretty cool. And a cross product, what it creates is it creates something that's orthogonal. And orthogonal just means it's perpendicular in 3D space. So if you see a cross product anywhere, um, it means that it is going to create something that is orthogonal to the other two things. So we have V going this way, right? And we have B going this way then the cross product of those two will create an orthogonal vector that is coming straight out of the page, right? Because it's perpendicular to the other two. So you can imagine this is kind of a y-axis, this is the x-axis, then the orthogonal vector would be going straight along the z-axis, straight out of the page, which I can't draw because I can't draw in three-dimensional space on a piece of paper. Um, okay, cool, so that's cool. Um, and so now we should talk about kind of uh, the force due to a magnetoplasma dynamic uh, thruster and kind of the calculations of that because it's kind of really difficult to calculate the force of these things, right? So, I mean, we just looked at the picture of one, we can look at it again. It's really complicated, right? So, as a reminder, magnetic field, right, direction of the current, and so therefore direction of the force, right, or direction of the particles, right? Um, and so pretty much there's a lot of lines going on in here, um, and there's a lot of different directions in which all the different currents and such are going, right? Um, and so there's a whole bunch of different ways in which people try to outline the thrust that is created by a MPD thruster. Um, and the first one, which is created by um, uh, a man named Macker, who was uh, one of the first physicists to ever look at MPD thrusters, um, outlines a very, very simple equation of thrust for an MPD thruster, and this is called the Macker modal, right? And pretty much it says that the thrust is equal to B times the current squared. Um, and so what is B? B is just this coefficient, right? which is related to the electrode geometry. So pretty much the positioning and radius of the anode and the cathode, right? So pretty much we see here, it is this number, and this number here um, is uh, pretty much the um, permeability of free space, right? Um, and so that's just a constant that has to do with magnetic fields. Um, and so we have that constant, pretty much, times the natural log of the radius of the anode over the radius of the cathode. Right, um, and so then we have all that 
plus this other symbol right here, which I'll talk about in a second. Cool, so that's all interesting. Um, but to be honest, it's not actually super accurate, right? And um, so what we have instead is we have this thing called the modified macro model, right? Um, which is a bit more accurate in determining the thrust of an MPD thruster and takes into account this thing called the Alfin critical speed, right? So you can see right here, so the Alfin critical speed is equal to the point where the average kinetic energy, sorry, I need to move the page up. The Alfin critical speed is equal to the point where the average kinetic energy of the gas is equal to the first ionization energy of said gas. So pretty much all that means is the Alfin point is um, the uh, point, the speed at which a, um, a uh, substance will become ionized, right? Um, and so it can be determined by this equation up here, right? Um, and so that's important in the uh, modified macro model. And the other thing that's important is uh, because of this um, Alfin model, uh, there we need to determine when the gas can be partially ionized. So it, there can be some of the particles that are going faster and some of the particles that are going slower. So when it's right around the Alfin critical speed, um, the average of the entire soup of particles um, can be above or below, but there can be some particles that are above and some particles that are below, meaning some are ionized, some are not. So we have to incorporate the partial current of um, when portions but not all of the gas are ionized. This partial current can be determined by this right here. Um, and it's determined on mass flow rate, electrogeometry. So this B coefficient is the electrogeometry, which I just showed you. Um, and it is also dependent on the uh, velocity, right? The alpha critical speed. Um, so therefore, the modified macro model uh, kind of has two equations, right? So um, it has one equation that is for uh, sub alpha and critical speeds and one equation that is for super alpha and critical speeds, right? So pretty much right here, we see that when the velocity of the, um, the soup kind of, right, all the plasma or all the ions that are in there is less than the alpha and critical speed. So when they're not ionized yet, um, the equation for that can be determined as uh, this right here, right? And so that's mass outflow, right? That's current and that's the partial current, right? Um, and then when it is above the alpha and critical speed, um, it's just B times I squared, which is the same as the normal macro model, right? So all the modified macro model does is it introduces a new equation um, that uh, lists the thrust given when the um, uh, soup of ions is not actually ionized yet, right? So it's not actually ions yet. Cool. So another model that's interesting to look at um, is the Tikhonov model, right? Um, and so it tries to use just one continuous function as opposed to the modified macro model, which uses the piecewise function. Uh, it tries to use one continuous function to define the thrust of an MPD thruster. And the equation is as follows. So it's B, which is that thruster geometry, plus all these other things right here. This is current, this is mass outflow, right? And I'll talk about what this is in a second. Um, and this is, this is a gamma, for those of you who don't know. Um, so this, this gamma is a um, parameter that is just based on here parameter that is based on thruster geometry and propellant. Um, so pretty much as the discharge current increases, gamma decreases. Um, cool. So that's interesting to look at. Um, and then another model, and I'll compare all these models in a second too. Another model is just an analytical model, right? And so this is the analytical model right here. And all it does is it just takes all these different variables that we've been working with and uh, it makes a curve fit to a lot of data that was created based on NPD thrusters. So it's literally just a curve fit to data that already exists, right? So that's also interesting. Um, and so let's look at the comparison between all these. So the issue with the empirical model is that it doesn't actually work great because um, of hydrogen, right? So hydrogen is one of the propellants that is frequently used in NPD thrusters. Um, and it actually has some variability in its alpha and critical speed, right? Um, and this is true for any molecular propellants, and hydrogen is a molecular propellant. So because of this, and because molecular propellants are very frequently used in MPD thrusters, the empirical model isn't really great. So we're left with the um, macro model and the Tikhonov model, right? Um, and we can look at uh, this graph right here, right? And we can see the macro model, which is this dotted line, right? And then we can see the Tikhonov model, which is this straight line right here, and then we can see our actual dots, but it's our actual data. Um, and we can see how they both kind of closely fit the actual data, although neither of them are perfect. 
Um, it's generally accepted that the macro model is a little bit better. The modified macro model is a little bit better at determining the thrust of MPD thrusters as opposed to the Tikhonov model. Um, but both are useful in their own rights and can be accurate and inaccurate at different times. Um, and then we have a completely kind of different way of determining the thrust of an MPD thruster. Um, and this completely different way is um, based off the geometry, the different geometry regions of the thruster, right? Um, and so we can see here, um, it was a paper written by this guy named Petrucci. Um, and so we can see here, he divide, divides the MPD thruster into these different zones and regions, right? Um, and these different zones and regions all have to do with the uh, direction at the time of the current, right? So let's go back to our picture of the MPD thruster real quick. So because the anode's here and the cathode's here, like we talked about before, um, when the when we're sitting just like right here, the current is going straight up in this direction, right? We can see from all these lines. But when we're over here, for example, right, because the cathode's here and the anode's here, the current is bending in all these lines over here, right? It's bending in all these lines. And that kind of messes up what we were talking about with the Lorentz force, right? Um, because it creates a whole bunch of different uh, directions that the Lorentz force actually pushes in instead of just being straight out the whole time. Um, so he divides them up into these different zones based on the uh, direction of current and different regions, right? Um, and so pretty much what we look at is uh, we have kind of a whole bunch of complicated math, which I'm not going to go into a ton of detail about. Um, uh, but you can look at the equation right there. Um, and so that is the equation for region one, the magnetic field of region one, right? Um, and so pretty much that defines it for uh, each of the different zones. Um, and then in region two, um, we have this idea of uh, pumping and blowing forces, right? Um, and you can see there's another equation there. Um, and I'm not going to go into a, a ton of detail on all this math um, because I don't think I could fully do it justice. Um, but I put the equations right on the screen right there. You should uh, go look them up and do the math for yourself if you're interested in doing that. Um, and then finally, we kind of have these different regions and zones of the direction of the Lorentz force, right? So you can see based on the different directions of the magnetic field, the force will go in all different directions, right? It will go in all different directions. So um, his model, which defines equations for each of the different regions, um, kind of takes into account the fact that um, the magnetic field and current directions are different in each of these regions and zones in the MPD thruster. Cool. Thank you for watching the video. Um, if you're confused about anything, leave a comment. That would be awesome. I'll respond to you as soon as I can. Um, and if you haven't already, you should go watch my video about uh, just basic force and basic thrust for uh, rocketry. Um, applications, and then you should also go watch um, a new, my new video on um, ion drives, which I will be out soon. Thank you.